Daily Bible Time, Dominic Steele, and today at Village Church we're honouring a resident of Annandale Street who has uh, died in the last little while. Uh, she's lived a block or two from our church since 1939, and so the gathering for that, uh, her funeral service at 3.30 this afternoon. Now Mark's Gospel and Mark 15 verse 20, they led him out to crucify him. Now it was the Roman and Jewish practice to perform executions beyond the inhabited area of the town, the city, and uh, Jerusalem. I mean, it was a much, much smaller city than it is today. And uh, what was then out of town is now fully built up and quite central. Um, Verse 21, they forced a man coming in from the country uh, who was passing by to carry Jesus's cross. He was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Uh, Jesus had been so weakened by the beating, the flogging by um, well, first the Jews and then the uh, Romans that he was actually unable to carry the plank, the heavy, well, they have a big plank that would actually be linked to the, the tall thing uh, for the crucifixion, but they had to carry their own plank and he couldn't carry his plank because he was so weakened. Now, Simon, who was deployed to carry this plank, he's mentioned in the other Gospels, um, some have suggested that he was a, a visitor to Jerusalem, because the verse says he was coming in from the country, um, but that his sons are mentioned, and at least Mark knows who his sons are, implies that he's more well known to at least Mark's original readers than a totally random visitor. And so, I mean, perhaps he'd had business in the country that day and was coming back, and he was coming in from the country. Anyway, only Mark mentions the sons, and um, the suggestion is that uh, he mentions them because perhaps they were well known to at least some of Mark's original readers, and perhaps. Um, Verse 22, they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. Now, the place where Jesus was crucified lay outside, but near the city wall or the then city wall they called it Golgotha Aramaic name for skull Um, in the early second century Jewish Christians in Jerusalem they venerated um, an unprepossessing end of a rocky slope outside the city as the site of the crucifixion and um, honor and praise to God started to happen at that site and now a church well probably that site is where this present church, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, was built uh, in an area which lay outside the corner or the second wall. And I mean, it is highly built up now. Um, If you're watching on the video, we'll put up a couple of photos that I took in 2018. It's busy, it's bustling, it's a tourist destination. But um, even among all of that, actually, I've, I've got to say, visiting this site where this church has been built, and I went exhausted the day after the frantic GAFCON conference, um, But just to stop and reflect, it was probably here that my Saviour died, that my Lord was executed right here. This spot, I mean, it wasn't my style. The candles, the ornaments, I I didn't like it at all. But wow, it was here. It was an amazing thing to be there. And uh, I mean, he walked up that path and it happened here. They, they tried, verse 23, to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. Um, at first, I was a little surprised at this verse, which said he didn't take the wine vinegar mixture, because I was remembering John chapter 19, and um, in John chapter 19, verse 20, later knowing that everything had now been full, finished so that scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he'd received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished, and with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And I thought, hang on, why does he say no to the drink in Mark 15, 23, and yes to the drink in John 19? Um, but actually, when I read them together, I discovered that they were consistent because in John's Gospel, he takes the drink in the, just the few seconds before he dies, whereas in Mark 15, he refuses the drink before he's nailed on the cross. So there's a time difference. Now, the commentator said this drink in Mark um, had some kind of narcotic numbing effect. And his suggestion, Lane's suggestion, was that Jesus' refusal to drink it is because he chooses to endure with full consciousness the sufferings that have been appointed for him. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time. And we will look forward to your company 
on Thursday morning. Let me lead us in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the love expressed to us in this death of Jesus. And we thank you that um, it was a real place. Um, it was real history. And he really did die. And we thank you that he chose to accept the full horror of this death without anaesthetic, without narcotics. We thank you for his love for us in his penal substitutionary atonement. And we thank you for that in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for being with us on Daily Bible Time today. We'll look forward to your company tomorrow.